We question our daily position Seeking answers and definitions Get the queries of your chest With Ahkam SOS And welcome to another live show of Ahkam SOS. I'm your host, Abu Talib Muhammad, and I'm joined by Sheikh Ali Ma'ar. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. How are you, Sheikh? You're well, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Inshallah, the viewers have had a great weekend. It's been a long weekend with an extra bank holiday. I think we've experienced many things, many issues we've had where we thought to ourselves, is there a question that we can send to Ahkam SOS? This is your show. This is where you can send in your questions, and inshallah, we'll get them answered for you. Don't forget that the show is running in live. You can give us a call. You can send your questions via WhatsApp. You can send your questions via YouTube. You can send your questions via Facebook. All the options are available. Why not give us a call on plus four four zero two zero three five one five zero one double nine nine. Getting the opportunity to speak to me or to the Sheikh and get your question answered straight away directly. Sheikh Ne, how has your weekend been? Alhamdulillah, great. It's been great, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. What a nice start to the week. Full of excitement, full of questions coming in. And I also believe that we have started with many questions coming in straight away. And it started off with WhatsApp. We've, our first question is coming from WhatsApp and it says, Salaamun Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Is it permissible for the father to intervene in the future of their children and insist on choosing a particular specialization, even if that, that even if that does not go with what they like or aim to do in the future. أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهرين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم أجمعين. Um, to intervene into the matters of one's daughters and 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 sons and in overall uh, that is something is not really uh, encouraged uh, but that doesn't mean that the children you know the, the sons and daughters can actually uh, uh, dissatisfy their parents or even reaching the stage of hurting them yes uh, <coughs> we have various narrations from Ahl Bayt to which prevents us from hurting our parents uh, verbally or other means. I mean, the very clear Quranic verse, وَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْفٍ Do not even say off, you know, f, you know, yes. it's just, you know, feeling that kind of, uh, that you're fed up from their speeches or lectures or sermons yes, yes. or advices or, you know, admonishments. So one should really respect his parents and, avo and, and her parents and avoid this kind of Adam uh, al-Rida no. which causes eventually uquq in which they would reject their, uh, 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 their, their you know, children in, ter in terms of loving them or respecting them. So that's, that's a problem again. So one should avoid that kind of uh, uh, arguments or disputes with his parents and her parents try to always seek their um, satisfactions unless if it's haram then of course do not obey them when it comes to haram when it comes to haram exactly exactly inshallah inshallah we shall be obeying our parents because there are role models and alhamdulillah they have, they have that they have brought us to the faith of islam and the wilayah of ali ibn abi talib and i'm sure that all the parents that do try to push their children into studying or into special um, special specializations, they want the best for them. I believe we have, thank you very much for that Sheikhna, uh, inshallah that's answered the question. I believe we have some more questions coming in and again it's a WhatsApp question that says, some women let their nails grow longer than necessary for beauty purposes. Now some of them break, requiring for them to cover them with plastic nails. Now doing such a cover or doing putting such a cover, does this prevent wudu and ghusl? This is the first part of the question. And then it says, if it does prevent wudu and ghusl, what has to be done or how should ghusl be performed to cover this? Basically, anything that prevents the reach of water to the skin, to the nails, to the original nails and yes. not the, the ones which are artificial, for example, they should be all be removed. Otherwise, the ghusl and the wudu 
and eventually the salah would be invalid. Naam. Anything that you think would prevent the reach of water to the skin or to the nails uh, must be removed and then uh, you have to allow uh, water to reach, uh, be it in the ghusl or wudu, to, uh, to the body so you can have the full purification for the salah uh, and so on. Otherwise, um, uh, you, can't, you can't really uh, continue with this, only if, if it's removable. Yes. In other words, you have to remove it three times a day or no, two times no. a day for the purpose of salah and, and, and wudu and even ghusl in some cases. So if it's removable and the water reaches, that's fine. But otherwise, if it's not removable, uh, it's one of those that sticks on the, on the nails, for example, uh, in a permanent glue or whatever is, yes. n is named, then you can't really, you have to remove it for the ghusl and wudu. Inshallah, thank you very much for that, Sheikh. Inshallah, that question has been answered for the sisters which are dealing with such issues. Um, again, as we've said previously, the live show, why not send in your questions? We are taking in the simplest questions. We are taking in the questions which you're like, okay, is what I've done halal? Is what I've done haram? Maybe I should get it answered. Instead of me going to Ayatollah, going to the mosque and getting questioned, why not send it over to us? It just takes you like literally 30 seconds to type it up, send it over to us. Our technical team will forward it to me and get it answered for you or give us a call. I think it's really straightforward. Pick up the phone, dial plus four four zero two zero three five one five zero one double nine. Get him to speak to the Sheikh himself getting your questions answered. And we have some more questions coming in. And again, it's a WhatsApp question. It says, Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Are pictures, drawing, etc. on towels or t-shirts halal or haram? Those pictures are allowed. There's no issue with it. But when it comes to the Salah time, of course, uh, you can't. I mean, it's not haram, but mostly makruh or discouraged. Yes. Or let's say it's got less thawab. Uh, if you pray with those pictures, you know, exposed no. in that room. So that's the issue of, of, of Salah would be uh, raised here in, in this situation. So, so I think a better recommendation will be to wear just plain clothes or a dishdasha, which is the Arabic dressing, which is much easier, isn't it? Of course, the plain is the best option. Uh, pictures is not something really encouraged for the one to have pictures of, let's say, singers or yes. players and so forth. No, no, no. In overall, but uh, as I've said, the issue... And if, if the issue is, is raised, it's to do with the karaha, discouragement, it's, it's not haram when it comes to salah. No. Inshallah. Thank you very much for that, Sheikhna. And again, Inshallah, that's answered the question for the viewer. Inshallah, there are many more questions to go through. We want to hear your questions. We want to know what issues you're having so that these topics will be opened live for you. And we have some more questions coming in. And again, it's a WhatsApp question. It says, if a drop of blood falls into food that's being prepared, and the food is boiling. Does the food become nejis or not? Yes, indeed. Um, if it was a liquid type of food nah. in which uh, you know, the whole pan uh, would be, for example, uh, the saucepan would be all become nejis, uh, the food itself, um, um, of course, one, ha ha they, they can't really consume this, this type of food because it's nejis now. You can't feed your guests, for example. And uh, you can't really purify it by evaporating the rest of the... Right, right. I right. mean, you have to wash the, the, pan, the saucepan, for example. Maybe if it's a chicken or meat, you can wash that meat or chicken to purify it. So uh, you, you say all the solids can be washed? Washed, exactly. Whereas yeah. everything that's liquid, liquid like yeah. the sauce or the, or yes. the paste or the curry, exactly. everything has to be removed. Exactly. Inshallah, that makes it really clear. So all the solids will be to be removed and to be washed to remove the najas out of them. And then everything else will start again. Exactly. I think it's going to be a difficulty in the kitchen to get that started all over again. Uh, I believe we have some more questions coming in from WhatsApp. Everybody's on WhatsApp today. And we have another question that says, Salaamun Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. What is the opinion of the learned Islamic scholars about globalization? And what are the pros and cons of this? In overall, uh, if this notion used in the positive way and manner, uh, then of course we accept it. Uh, the Holy Quran states, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in Surah Al-Hujarat, Ya ayyuhal nas, inna khalaqnakum min dhakrin wa untha, wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qawaila lita'arafu. We have made you nations and tribes that you may know one another. If it's that type of uh, uh, 
uh, notion of, of, of the subject, and of course, we can, uh, you know, talk to, to each other as, as nations, uh, uh, meet with other communities, uh, religions, faiths, uh, cultures. That's fun. We open ourselves to others. That, there's no issue with it. No. But if it comes to what we see today, that they try to use this notion to overtake the world's economy, politics, yes, uh, uh, even culture, no. to, to uh, uh, spread corruption through the social media, yes. through the, then that's, of course, we reject that type of, yes. uh, for this notion. So it depends, really. There's a positive or negative. We have to be careful when it comes to the negative side, that they try to take over the world by waging wars, as we see today, inside Europe, that there's a war, sadly. And that's the result of past wars yes. that breeds and, and, and gives birth to such wars inside Europe, sadly. Inshallah. Thank you very much for that, Sheikhna. We pray and hope, Inshallah, that there is peace all around the world for all brothers and sisters of all colors, of all backgrounds and of all faiths. Because this is what our religion teaches us. This is what our Prophet and Ahlul Bayt teach us, that we come for peace. I want happiness and joy and for everybody to have a safe roof over their heads. We have some more questions coming in and they are a YouTube question and it says, Salaamun Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I am married and I have children. I want my children to grow in a separate house to have a calm environment. Is this haram or not, Shaykhna? You see, what is important that they are nurtured and educated in, in the right way according to the uh, Quranic teachings and Ahl al-Bayt um, And of course, uh, the children need uh, the emotions and the passions of their parents. Um, if you want to separate them, then how are they going to get those passions and emotions? Yes. So, uh, I think it's, it's difficult. Uh, I'm not how, how they're going to manage, uh, you know, even if you bring a nanny or a guardian. Yes. It's, it's not like a parents to be over the, you know, in the shadow of the parents be over them all day, you know, day and night. So it, it's difficult, to be honest. Okay, thank you very much for that. Sheikhna, thanks for answering that question. And inshallah, that individual sister can think twice about is it right for her to get another house, another accommodation for her children to grow up. Uh, although she's shadowing them, it's better to have a father role as well as a mother role in the house and for them to grow up and to be nurtured in a better environment. And we have some more Facebook questions, which is great to hear because we've got lots of Facebook viewers. We want to hear your questions individually. If you have like a question like, maybe this is off topic, maybe this question sounds silly, or maybe this question is not to be asked, no, send it over to us and we'll get it answered because it's not just you thinking about it, it's many others as well, but some do not have the time or can't reach to the internet to get it questioned. Why not you do it on behalf of them and send your questions over to us so that we can get it answered for you. The question says, Salaamun Alaikum. My question is, I read Zuhur and Asr together and just want to know, do I need to read one Adhan or two apart? No, you need one Adhan for both of them. But you need to do also iqama for each. So iqama after the adhan for the first uh, salah, which is the dhuhr, you finish salat al dhuhr, uh, you stand up for salat al asr, you do iqama, not the adhan, because you've already done the adhan. So it's just, it's just one adhan, one adhan call, prayer call for the whole uh, for this afternoon, let's say, yes. session. But for each salah, you have separate. Uh, iqama. iqama. So it's one adhan that you can do. And two iqama. But for every salah, you do different part. Exactly. Inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you very much. Inshallah, that's answered the first question as well as the second part of your question that you forwarded. Uh, and we have some more YouTube questions. And it says, Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Is it allowed to make a living on bank interests from banks? Um, you see, the issue of interest uh, is an issue in which one needs to get the permission from his marja. I think, that, I think that's the safe side to ask, uh, you know, to call your marja rep or the office for this purpose. Yes. There are differences possibly with this regard uh, because we have an issue with interest no. in overall. Although it's been solved in somehow that we can receive uh, interest from those banks, but you have to pay the khumus when you receive it. And if, and if it's Islamic or non-Islamic, 
you know the hukum would be a bit uh, more in, in depth but i would i would suggest the one if they want to make a living out of this they have to contact their office and it all depends marja. on whichever marja you follow yeah exactly yes inshallah thank you very much for that sheikhna and inshallah that's answered the question in regards to interests and making a living of interests now we have some more questions and it's coming over and we have a question it says is it permissible for an individual to sell one thousand dollars for one thousand one hundred dollars of the same currency to another person as part of selling or a lending transaction no such uh, transaction is not permissible in either case uh, there could be some kind of riba involved especially from, been from the same currency okay so yeah the one should avoid it yeah so that will be the same idea of having interest basically on it yeah that's what we have riba that's exactly, riba okay yeah. and if it, if it was a different currency no there's no issue with it because we, we can we when we go for example to hajj for example or ziyara yes. in, in iraq for example we give pounds we receive dinar or dirham or dollars even that that, that difference it should be fine but for the same currency is an issue no you can't get from the same currency an excess extra, extra as a return. Inshallah, thank you very much for that. Sheikhna, inshallah, that's answered the question in regards to same currency but different values or selling the same value for a bigger figure of the same currency. Again, brothers and sisters, we want to hear your questions. We want to hear what issues, what difficulties, what make you think twice about is what I've done valid? Is what I've done makro? Is what I've done haram? Maybe I should. Um, do another salah because what my salah was haram or maybe I should do another fast or pay a kafara for a fast because it was invalid why not send in your questions over via whatsapp via facebook via youtube or give us a call we want to hear your voices we want to hear your voices we want to hear any issues you have you get the opportunity to speak to me or to the sheikh on calling on plus four four zero two zero three five one five zero one double nine and again we have some more questions that have come in and we have a question from WhatsApp. It says, is it permissible to abort the fetus if it causes harm to the mother? If it's a life-threatening situation in which puts the uh, mother's life at risk, of course, that is allowed and permissible. Otherwise, it's not. You know, there's no excuse for a mother to abort the fetus of a child. No. Uh, just because of, uh, you know, she's going to be uh, named and shamed, for example, in somehow or uh, disrespected because of this issue uh, you know it has to be something which uh, is based on a uh, life-threatening situation yes and, and the risk on her life otherwise she's not allowed inshallah thank you very much for that sheikhna and again um, inshallah everybody will have the success of having children because i believe children is a gift from god and all gifts are wrapped in different ways and we have some more questions coming in from whatsapp and it says salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh a couple are engaged and are in temporary marriage the date of the nikah is fixed before the temporary marriage duration it's supposed to end is the nikah valid if recited within the contract of temporary marriage so they basically recited the temporary marriage uh, contract first yes do you want me to read it out again? But I think it's clear. They have to initially end the duration or uh, uh, the husband should give the a habil mudda to give back, you know, to let off their, their the period. Rem remaining periods. And then they start a new nikah for the permanent one. No. So you either they either wait for the duration to end or to let it off. Inshallah. Thank I you very much. I have like a mudda that, you know, I'm no longer to continue with you with this marriage and then the contract ends and then they, they start initiate with the permanent uh, marriage inshallah. inshallah thank you very much for that sheikhna inshallah that's answered the question i wanna i've read too many questions i want to hear your voice the viewer the show is yours um, we are here for you we want to hear your voice i want a phone call coming in please give us a phone call get your question answered it's lovely reading out these questions but it's also really good to hear your voices because sometimes there are many uh, segments to the question or sometimes the question is not answered directly so why not give us a call on plus four four zero two zero three five one five zero one double nine nine and we have good questions coming in from youtube and it says um it's a follow-up question in regards to the family or in regards to the question that came from a sister that said i'm married 
and I want my children to grow up in another household. It says, I am asking with my husband, I mean to say separate from in laws because of course I can't have enough time to my husband and child. So she wants to have their own uh, house yes. away from the in-laws. Uh, I'm asking with my husband, I mean to say separate from my in-laws because of course I can't give enough time to my husband and child. So yeah, they're living with their in-laws. She wants to move out from her in-laws to have enough time for her husband and her child or children. Is this halal or haram? No, indeed, uh, this is what has been encouraged that if you have the means, you can, uh, you can, the, the, the husband can maintain to have a uh, separate property. That is what has been encouraged to, to the one to have their own separate house. I mean, the, the great example of the house of Ali and Fatima, alayhi salam, they had a separate house no. uh, for themselves. So uh, to avoid, you know, for, for us, of course, uh, to, to avoid any issues with the in-laws or on uh, uh, one should have a separate house if they can afford, of course, as no. I've said. If not, well, we have no choice no. to stay with them, you know, share the food, share the kitchen and so forth. Yes, yes, Which yes. it was before in the, in the 50s, 60s in Iraq and Iran, they used to live in one house, you know, 16, 17 people. Families, individuals. The whole, yeah. It was a nice time, but it was difficult for, right. for, the, for, for the newlywed couples, you know, for them to basically be free in their house because they've only uh, just a room and they share the bathroom and they share the kitchen, which is difficult for them. Yes, I think today's day and age has changed. Well, yeah, I mean, um, now it's difficult and it could cause issues and problems. So yes. it's better for the one to have their own separate flat or house if they can afford, as I've said. Uh, to avoid any issues with the in-laws. Otherwise, you know, they have to live with it until Allah Azza gives them the, uh, the sustenance and the rizq to be able to, to, to go out and rent or buy their own property. Inshallah. Thank you very much for that, Sheikhna. Again, thank you very much for that, sister. Um, I think, Inshallah, it's just a period of time where things will ease for you. And it's really good, to be honest, the fact that when you send in a question and it's not fully answered, you send a follow-up question so that we make sure we've answered the question for you. This proves that the questions are coming in and you're watching the question and you're not getting it answered, but coming back for it to be answered fully. Thank you very much for that question. And again, we're hoping to see many, much more questions coming in. And we have another uh, YouTube question and it says, what is qada and qadar exactly? Qada or qadar, they have uh, different meanings with, with regard in, in the kutub of the uh, hadith. Qada uh, and you have qada. Qada, for example, is the hukum for Allah Azza wa Jal. Wa qada rabbuka alla ta'budu qada Allah illa iya. Wa bil walidin ihsana. So the qada Allah, hukum Allah Azza wa Jal is, is like this. The qadar is the time, is, this, is the amount given, the time given. The qadar al insan. You have, the qadr of, of your life is to live 70 years, for example. That's no. your qadr. That, that much you have of, of time to be in this world, for example. So uh, lots of discussions are made in the kutub of the, uh, of the hadith with this regard, which the imams, they explain the meaning of the qadr and qadr, that um, uh, qadr is hukum, Allah's rule, and the qadr is the amount given, the, the duration of the amount no. for, for that individual. Inshallah, thank you very much, Sheikhna, for that. And that was a WhatsApp question to all the viewers. We're going to take a short clip. Please stay seated. Actually, watch the clip because it's going to show you how you can send in your questions. And it's very soon. Please stay seated and we'll see you shortly. I have a question regarding keeping pictures Is of spoilers. Is it permissible at home? to plant trees by or Does over Islam the establish graves? based on peace Is and non-violence? Is it permissible to collect donations for charity projects from? Is it permitted to consume canned food imported from non-Muslim countries? Is there an issue for men looking at non-Muslim women? To have your questions answered live, call in on plus four four two zero three five one five zero one nine nine, or WhatsApp us on plus four four seven four one five zero nine two one five five. Alternatively, you can also email us on ahkamsos at imamhussein.tv Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. We've taken a short clip, inshallah nobody has gone anywhere, but you've prepared your questions because we've got so many questions coming in. The clip showed you how you can send your questions over to us via YouTube, via Facebook or via WhatsApp 
or not, or, or you can actually give us a call or why not give us a call on plus four four zero two zero three five one five zero double nine getting the opportunity to speak to me or to the sheikh and getting your answers to the questions that you have been thinking of we have a question coming in and it says salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh how can we prove to disbelievers that what the believers are saying is right bismillah rahman rahim in kitab al kafi uh, this narration is mentioned that a man uh, from the disbelievers دَخَلَ رَجُلٌ مِنَ الزَّنَادِقَ عَلَىٰ أَبِي الْحَسَنَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ وَعِنْدَهُ جَمَاعَةً That a disbelieving man came to the gatherings of the Imam al-Rada alayhi salam uh, The Imam asked this man, he knew, he knew this man نعم. before for his arguments على كل حال about uh, his disbelief and atheism and so forth فقال أبو الحسن عليه السلام The Imam turned to this man and he said to him أيها الرجل أو man أرأيت إن كان القول قولكم وليس هو كما تقولون أو oh man uh, tell me if what you say is what you say is what you say and not of course what you say in other words your statements are false نعم. and not true that God doesn't exist, there's no qiyama, there's no hisab, there's no uh, judgment day, and so forth. Alasna wa iyakum shara'an sawa' Aren't we on the same seashore? In other words, we are living in the same planet, same place. Same place. We eat, we drink. We're with you. Same the same, same activity. Exactly. La yadharruna. Wouldn't harm us. Ma ما صلينا وصمنا وزكينا وأقررنا It wouldn't harm us if we pr have prayed, prayed fasted, fasted uh, paid zakat and we have submitted to this belief and you, you haven't done this at all no. you, didn't, you, you were a disbeliever, you didn't pray, you didn't fast and so forth وأقررنا So فسكت الرجل The man kept quiet in this instant قال أبو الحسن عليه السلام the Imam says وإن, so basically we are with you equal نعم be it uh, you as a, as a argument case be it you believed or you didn't believe نعم we prayed you didn't pray it we lived in the same world we صحيح. ate we enjoyed alhamdulillah we got married and beside all this in, uh, enjoyments and, and living and making money and so forth we prayed, we went to the Hajj, we paid zakat, and they didn't harm us. Harm us, we didn't have so, any difficulties. No. It's just like, like those who, I think they play yoga or, or they go to the gym. And we don't go to the gym, for no. example. So um, it doesn't really harm us. No. So our prayers didn't really take a lot of our times, for example, or the fast, instead of fast, the hadith says, uh, صوم تصحو. صحيح. Fast and you get healthier. healthier. It's, it's, it's uh, something benefits us. Uh, ثم قال أبو الحسن رضا عليه السلام وإن كان القول قولنا and if the uh, the argument was for us on our side وهو قولنا and it's our side what we said is right that there is a God there is a judgment day there is a حساب كتاب uh, there is واجبات محرمات وهو قولنا ألستم قد هلكتم ونجونا isn't it that we won and you lost yes so a uh, very clear indication that uh, those who uh, think that there's nothing after this life, there's no God, there's no judgment day, they're actually losers uh, because we indeed have the evidence from the aql and naql that uh, God does exist and there are ahkam and there are rules. As we see today with the governments, governments exist, they have rules, legislations. Uh, so what about the one who created this universe right. in such sophisticated and such you know, uh, dedicated in, in his, in his uh, creation. Azzawajal. Thank you very much for that, Sheikhna. And inshallah, may Allah invite us the ziyarah of Imam Rada. What a lovely hadith sure. that was. Sure. And funnily enough, or actually, what you've said has brought this question, and it's not a question, it's, a, it's somebody asking uh, the Sheikh something. And it's, he's asking for dua and he's saying, Salaamun Alaikum, Sheikh, I converted to Shi'ism not too long ago. I want to go to Karbala University to study fiqh of Shi'ism. Please make dua for me. I think this is one of the previ one of the persons that previously did not believe 
and insha'Allah he has come back to believe and, and, and insha'Allah he will be invited to go to study fiqh in Karbala University. Shaykhna, please don't forget him in your dua. And do you have any advice for him? Insha'Allah, um, yes, the brother has a great tawfiq from Allah Azza wa Jal that Allah paved the way for him to be guided uh, towards the, uh, the, tr the true and haq aqeedah of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam because as the Quran uh, stated, you know, with regards to purifying Ahlul Bayt so he's following the most purified individuals on earth that Allah has ever created. Thorough purification. And that's only for Ahl Bayt. No. And on top of them, Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Sallallahu alayhi wa Allah alayhi gave the opportunity to go and study inshallah and gain knowledge uh, and, and of course uh, propagate this message to the rest of the world. Inshallah, inshallah. I hope from the bottom of my heart and I pray to this individual that Allah will inshallah success him to go to Karbala and study fiqh and inshallah he'll be able to spread the love of Ahlul Bayt and the message of the Prophet peace be upon him to many other brothers and sisters. Uh, we have some more questions coming in and it says Salamun alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and I think this question um, I would think of myself as well because all these iPads and these uh, new electronics that have come in and it says is it permissible for one to recycle documents or religious books which contain the names of the 14 infallibles Allah and or Quranic verses because now everything's available on iPads, on iPods, on iPhones um, everything's available so we're not picking up books very much so if we have these indoors are we allowed, is it halal for us to recycle such documents? What do you mean by recycle? Sometimes if it's, you want to throw this, uh, let's say, uh, systems in the specific re recycling bins in which they would uh, dismantle this iPad and they melt down the, uh, let's say, if it's metal, metal, plastic, plastic, and so on. Yes. This type of, of, of recycling is fine, but you cannot throw it in, into the Najas hut. No. Uh, because these systems now carry the Holy Quran, for example, yes. names of the Allah Azza wa Jal, Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam, you, you cannot, uh, I think they call defile, I think that's the word. Uh, you can't really throw it in the Najasat. No. So recycling is fine, yeah, there's no issue with it. Inshallah. Yeah. Thank you very much for that, Shaykhna. Inshallah, that's answered the question for the individual that asked the question as well as the other viewers. And I have some really good news, and I believe we have a caller. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah. How are you, brother? You're well, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, all good. How are you, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah, very well. Uh, brother, do you want to tell us your question? Uh, yes, I have a question regarding uh, metal pots where people drink from. Uh, you know, in, in Iraq and Iran, our culture, we drink from small metal uh, tins or pots that has, you know, sometimes the names of, for example, Lafra uh, Jalala or the names of the Imams or Quranic ayahs or Hadith and stuff like that. Uh, what is the hukum? You know, I've heard that it's not allowed to drink from there or the water that goes in there cannot go through the drain. Is that correct or not? Insha'Allah. Thank you very much for that, dear viewer and dear brother. Insha'Allah, we'll get that question answered for you shortly. Do you have any other questions? That's, that's it. That's it. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank, thank you very you. much for that, brother. And Insha'Allah, we'll be answering that question for you very shortly. Sheikhna, the question says, in Iraq, in Iran, I also believe in the UK at some Imam Barqas and mosques, um, we drink or they drink from metallic cups or tins or bowls that have Ismid Jalala or the name of the 14 Ma'sumin or Ahlul Bayt. Uh, is it permissible to drink from that water and the rest of that water, if that goes down the drain, is it halal or is it haram or even makruh? Could we get your answers on that please? What is important that uh, the one who has no wudu or tahara, in other words, uh, shouldn't touch these verses inside that cup or the pot um, without wudu or without, without proper uh, purity or no. wusul and so forth. No. That's important that you, don't, you shouldn't t touch those verses. You know, sometimes you have Surah Yasin written or Surah or uh, Ayat al Kursi written. Uh, we have narrations with these regards that. You know, the, the man comes to the Imam alayhi salam, he's got a problem. The Imam says, you know, write, uh, for example, uh, uh, a specific ayah and then 
and so forth. So Take it as a shifa, for as example. As a shifa, for example, yes. yeah. But what is important as a fiqh side to avoid touching those verses if you are not pure, be it uh, for the men or the women, um, you know, those verses inside that cup. Otherwise, you can drink it. For shifa. There's no issue with it. Yeah. Inshallah. Thank you very much for that, Sheikh. And inshallah, that question has been answered for the caller. We want to hear more of your voices. Please. Give us a call on plus four four zero two zero three five one five zero one double nine nine, or send your questions in via WhatsApp, via Facebook, or via YouTube. We're taking all questions in, and I believe we have a Facebook question. It says, "Please, who are the best persons to do taqlid with in this era? What's the meaning of taqlid?" And Sheikh, please, who are you doing taqlid with? And he sent uh, a thank you gesture. Basically, taqlid means to follow for the, for the ignorant, for the jahil, to follow the alim. You see, we, we do taqlid uh, in most of our life, uh, you know, lifespan. We follow the doctors because they are the experts in me medics, medication. medication. So we get the prescription from them. So I, as a jahil, go to the alim in medic, medic, medics and try to get treatment from that doctor who is a alim in his field. I go to the mechanics to fix my car because I am jahil or ignorant in uh, the field of mechanics and so forth. Yes. I go to, and so forth. This is what the aql would call for the individual to go back to the expert, to those who uh, know better. Ask those who know. Fas'alu ahl dhikr Those who are uh, knowledgeable. Ask them, you know, seek guidance. So that's why we go in fiqh and jurisprudence, we go to the experts, and they're of course the ulama, uh, in which they would basically extract uh, those ahkam from the sources, from the kitab, from the sunnah, from the ijma' and from the aql. Nah. So four main sources of the, uh, uh, for extracting the ahkam al shara. So that's why you have to go back, if you are not a mujtahid, somebody who has reached the position of being able to extract those Ahkam from its sources to go back and do taqlid means to follow, um, imitate, I don't know what words you can use, imitate, yes. follow. Yes. Those experts in this field and whatever they say, you have to accept, accept. because they are, ex they are experts in this field in terms of uh, you know, the haram and the wajib and so forth. Inshallah. And of course, ulama are there, you can choose, uh, ask the experts uh, that you know, uh, I mean, uh, to, to follow, we have Ayatollah Shirazi in Qom. Atosistani in Najaf, and other ulama are also are around in Qom and Najaf that you can choose and follow. Um, may Allah bless you with, with, the, with the, inshallah more pious and piety inshallah. Inshallah, thank you very much for that Shaykhna. And there's a follow-up question to that and it says, and please, is it compulsory for everyone to do taqlid? Of course, it's wajib, compulsory. You have to follow, otherwise your amal would not be accepted if uh, it ends up that um, when you practice those ahkam and amal were different to what the marja has said. So you have to make sure that you choose one of the ulama uh, by asking the experts. Again, go back to the experts, ask those who know about who is uh, the a'lam, the, the most learned, for example. Some would put this condition that uh, they, he must be a'lam, no. uh, the most learned. Some would have different opinions and, and anyhow. Choose the one that you think is, is the best uh, um, that you can actually uh, follow and uh, do taqlid in which uh, otherwise you're going to get stuck with many of the ahkam. Who said that, uh, for example, this amal you're doing is actually uh, halal, could be haram, for example. So you have to go back, back to the experts. As you go back to the, uh, the experts in other fields, in technology, in energy, in, in medicine, and so forth. You have to go back to the expert. That's the aql says, inshallah. before the shari'ah. Inshallah, thank you very much for that, Shaykhna. Inshallah, let's answer the question about taqlid, and is it wajib or not? It is wajib, and you have to always go back to the specialized, if it was in religion, if it was in medication, if it was in any other topic, you have to go back to the experienced, and the expert in it. And we have some more questions coming in and it says, Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. During the pandemic, ladies were doing tabligh on Zoom and YouTube. Is it okay for ladies in full hijab to, to recite majalis on YouTube where everyone can watch? 
You see, in overall for the lectures, if, if the hijab was ob observed, there's no issue with it. If it's with the with hijab, everything's been observed in terms of the, the dig dignity and chastity and so forth. But when it, when it comes to reciting the noha or the latmiya, that's yes. the issue. Because uh, the voice of the woman, if it turns to be a bit softer than it's uh, you know, the, the norm, then that's the issue. Uh, we have something called taghannuj, you know, when the, soft, the, the, the voice goes very soft, that attracts in, in somehow the opposite gender. That's why uh, um, um, you see uh, when they say that when you, when, you ha when you talk to the opposite gender, make sure that she doesn't, uh, you know, ولا تخضع في القول. There's a verse in the Quran. خضوع في القول. Exactly. I'm not going with the ayah. خضوع في القول. If it's that softening the voice would be cause uh, an issue. No. So they have to be careful with this issue when it comes to reciting Nuha uh, and using their voice. No. That's, that's the issue. And that's, I think, only for the sisters. Sisters, yes. Whereas for the brothers, yes. it's open and they can recite. Yeah. Um, thank you very much for that, Sheikhna. And it's really good to hear that brothers and sisters during the pandemic, during difficulties, are using um, other resources and actually going into Imam Barqas or into masjids or into Husseiniyat or mosque to do the majalis, whereas they're using Zoom, YouTube, Facebook, other services to spread the love and the message of Ahlul Bayt. Peace be upon him, upon them, and inshallah may Allah accept us as their servants. We have a question and it is a WhatsApp question. It says, Salam alaikum. I have donated some money to someone towards his education who said he was an orphan and now he is not, or he is actually not an orphan. After completing his education, he has apologized and wants to repay. He has asked me how he can repay. What is the answer to that? And thank you very much, Sheikh. It's a WhatsApp question. So he wants to repay back. So he, he's, no. somebody's donated towards. Yeah. Uh, this individual's mm -hmm. education. When they donated, he said that he was an orphan. After completing his education, he's come back to the donator and said to him, actually, I'm not an orphan. I want to repay what you donated. Um, how Now the person that donated is asking, how can he repay? Um, how can he repay me? And if we can get your answer towards that. I think if I was in the place of this individual, I would ask him to pay to another orphan, an, an actual real orphan. Uh, maybe find one of those uh, legitimate organizations in which they cater for the orphans in Afghanistan, Iraq, Pakistan, other, other places in the world, uh, to pay this and keep it as a sadaqa jariya until no. this, this child grows. So just try, try, find, uh, find an, another orphan around the world and try to basically uh, give this, uh, this money to, uh, to that child. Um, just to keep that good act go ongoing, you know, I, I don't want to... You know, let's say if I if I pay uh, to Imam Barga or or Islamic Center uh, Niaz, no. and then I want to take it back. Yes. And let's let's keep this thawab go ongoing and, and not to get back the, the thawab or the donation. So. Inshallah, Inshallah. Thank you very much for that, Sheikh. I think Imam Hussein um, charity is available in such organizations. They work alongside with lots of orphans and your teams all around uh, needed countries like uh, Iraq and Pakistan and many other countries which are in need. And I think hearing such question, I think it really brings peace of mind to the heart that yeah. there are some people that have must lied in their life once, but after educating and graduating, they've come back and said, you know what, I can't hide this life for much longer. I have to go exactly. back to the person and say, thank you for supporting me. But you know what, I've lied to you and I want to come back and be honest. And as well, it's really good that uh, to hear that people are supporting the orphans because the orphans are in our responsibilities and we can't turn a blind eye when we see people in need. And I think it's really good to support them for studying because um, if, the, if this person did not study, then he wasn't able to repay or help out another orphan, which, which, which one orphan will have another orphan and it keeps on going. Inshallah, that cycle is in us and the blood of giving away or helping out is inside us and this is what we learn from Ahlul Bayt again we're coming always back to this is what our role models are Ahlul Bayt. Uh, we have some more questions coming in and it is from WhatsApp it says can a poor person pay sadaqah then at a later time he uses the sadaqah 
money for himself. So he's, he's a poor person, he is in need, he's given money away to Sadaqah, or he's put it aside in the house as Sadaqah. Can he use it and then say, okay, I have to pay Sadaqah box back by a couple of pounds or any other currency? You see, the poor individual becomes liable for Sadaqah if he is uh, uh, liable for Sadaqah when he is in, in need of it, of course. He is now uh, the one who is mustahaq, in other, in other words. Uh, for deserves a sadaqah because he is now in, in, in trouble of having less uh, uh, issue of finance. So he needs the sadaqah. Even with the zakat al-fitrah, for example, those who are in need of it to be given to them as well, uh, who are mustahaq, for example. Inshallah, thank you very much for that, Sheikhna. And we have another question, and I think, again, I can relate to that question because sometimes we're driving all over the UK or all over London. Sometimes we're in areas where there are no mosques or Imam Barqas available, and it says, can I pray Salah in a Hindu or a Sikh temple? In overall, um, in temples and churches, with the permission of their uh, uh, owners, or those who run that, that place, there should be no, no issue with it uh, if you want to pray in, in those places. Uh, if it's Tahir, for example, in terms of Najasa, there's no Najasa, for example. Uh, what is important that it doesn't really uh, promote that place when you go there in, in, in any how. Uh, but we have, for example, in airports, you know, uh, prayer rooms, for example, even non-Muslims come and they, they pray there as a quiet room, for example. No. So you can pray in those places, of course, with the permission given by the owners, and there's no, of course, impurity. Inshallah. Thank you very much for that, Sheikhna. Inshallah, that's answered. The question for the individual that sent the question over, Inshallah, the show is still running, and we'll have many more questions coming in. As we've said previously, the show is live. Why not give us a call? But unfortunately, prepare your questions for the next show coming because we're going to come down to the final question and it says Salaamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Shaykhna I have to perform ghusl wajib but I currently have a disease where it's not permissible for me to have showers what's needed for me to be done? If one cannot do ghusl of course there's always uh, the substitute and that is tayammum tayammum badal ghusl so they do tayammum badal ghusl or even wudu if you can't do wudu for any skin issues you have, uh, you do tayammum badal wudu again until that ailment has been uh, lifted, inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you very much for that, Sheikhna. Inshallah. Um, we pray for that individual. The, the whole team will pray for that individual, inshallah. The viewers will pray for that individual to pass by this period where they have this illness or difficulties. And inshallah, we have come down to the final few seconds of the show. I would like to thank the Sheikh. Okay. Sheikh, thank you very much for your time okay. and for your energy, for answering all the questions. I thank our team. And I also thank all the viewers that sent in their questions. And inshallah, for those that were thinking twice about sending in their questions or not, they will prepare them to send them in, inshallah, on Wednesday. The show will be live starting at 6.30 p.m. Inshallah, for now, I'll say, Fi Amanullah, and take care. Ma salam. <laughs>
we all have an inclination to the epitome of love. When we rejoice, when times are hard, whatever stage of life we are in, we all yearn to be in one special place. We all wish to visit the Blessed Shrine of Imam Al Hussein in the holy city of Karbala. Not all of us have the blessing to visit the shrine of Imam Hussein, but there is still a way to experience the sights and sound of the blessed land of Karbala in the comfort of your own homes. We call upon you, dear viewers, to support us in our financial costs to help bring the Holy Land of Karbala beaming into your homes. You can support us with a monthly donation of just 50 US dollars or 30 pounds. We are your gateway to Karbala. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Imam Hussein TV3.